Hello mga kawawmat! In this video lesson, we will discuss the importance of quantitative research across fields or in other disciplines. In this video lesson, we are able to determine why people conduct research, relate quantitative research to other disciplines, and illustrate the importance of quantitative research across fields. Why do people conduct research? Bakit nga ba tayo nagre-research? Para saan ba ito? Bilang isang senior high school student na ilang research yung pagdadaanan bago graduate ng senior high, kasi gagawa kayo ng qualitative research, quantitative research, sa, sa araw-araw na ginagawa natin, yung research ay upang malaman natin ang kasagutan sa ating mga tanong. Mahanap ang solusyon sa problema. At ito rin ay isang paraan na makadiscover tayo ng bagong kaalaman. So, ito yung mga kasagutan na kung bakit tayo gumagawa ng research. Una, knowledge production. So, it to produce knowledge and to discover relatively new knowledge for whatever important purpose it may serve. So, nandito yung discovery of knowledge. From here, makikita natin yung importance kung bakit natin ginagawa yung research based sa result o data na nag natin. Lahat ng pinag-aralan natin through research study or research or study are facts na pwede natin i-adapt o magamit sa darating na mga araw kung sakaling uh, gagawa ulit tayo ng research or study related dito. Number two, to find solution to a problem. Desire some answers to the problem we encountered in our daily lives. To develop, improve, or enhance ways of doing things. Finding answer. Since nakapag-produce na tayo ng knowledge, we can now find solutions or answers to the problems na ma-encounter natin. In finding answers, then there must be a question, but sometimes be careful and Precise in selecting questions that needs an answer. Number three, human's convenience. So this is, is done to make the lives of human beings easier. Humans crave convenience by allowing us to spend our time on what we find meaningful, like hobbies, personal goals, or people. So this is one of the major result of doing research. So like for example, before, letters are used to send messages to our loved ones. So, inaabot pa ng ilang araw, ilang buwan, minsan taon pa bago makarating sa kanila yung gusto nating sabihin. But now, but because of research, we now have our way of communicating through emails and other social media application. So, nandyan na si Messenger, nandyan si Facebook, nandyan ang Messenger na isang click mo lang makakausap na natin ang mga mahal natin sa buhay, lalo na kung malayo sa kanila. Lalo na kung malayo tayo sa kanila. So sa ngayon, ang messenger ay napakalaking tulong nito sa distance learning, especially sa mga teacher, kasi ito yung platform na ginagamit upang makapagbigay ng announcement, updates, at para makausap yung mga estudyante. Number four, research precedes progress. Progress will never happen without research. Whatever development we have today, this all because of research. Research, in connection to number three, any progress or developments na patuloy na nangyayari sa mga bagay na ginagamit natin or ginagawa, it's all because of research. Bakit tayo nagkaroon ng cellphone? Bakit tayo nagkaroon ng laptop, uh, computer, or appliances? na ini-enjoy natin ngayon that is because of research lahat yan ay pinag-aralan lalo na sa case natin ngayon medical practitioners are giving most of their time to study about vaccines in order to make it more effective sa mga tao para malabanan natin itong kumakalat na COVID-19 virus and number 5 it makes the world better. So, there are some research that becomes helpful to humans. Like, for example, the use of air conditioning units. So, gumagaan yung pakiramdam natin. Yes. At may bago ngayon, no? yung air fryer. So, isa rin yan sa produkto ng research. 
Pero if titingnan natin yung other side nito, may effect naman ito sa global warming and climate change because of its emissions. So that's why, isa ito sa mga pinag-aaralan kung bakit tayo gumagawa ng research. We must also think of our word. Baka mamaya, it is more helpful or harmful ba yung gagawin nating research. Dito pumapasok yung ethics of research. What are the consideration in doing a study? Importance of quantitative research and its benefits to different fields of specialization. The production of research results greatly has a big impact on the importance of quantitative research. It is also a reflec reflection of the specified specialization. This precise measurement and in deep analysis of data will also give effectiveness of the products. So again, when say precise, that is accurate or exact. So first uh, discipline is anthropology. So the quantitative research in anthropology. So when you say anthropology, it deals with the scientific study of humans, human behavior, and societies in the past and present. This is what makes human beings human. So here are some uh, research areas in anthropology. So first is the study of human culture, customs and beliefs in pre-industrial societies, uh, ethnography, the intensive long-term field work, understand how institutions develop. So yan yung mga pwedeng pag-aralan, no? yan yung mga research areas in anthropology, and functioning society. Another, so meron ding political anthropology, so that uh, study about questions, the assumptions of global politics, medical anthropology, so explore different experiences of medicines and disease, and the historical anthropology. So what is the reason why uh, yung mga anthropologists need to conduct studies? So yung dahilan nila is to re-evaluate old problems and apply ethnographic methods to modern people in a rapidly changing and globalizing world. At, so according to Bernard, meron tayong limang steps in conducting through experiments so with human beings. First, you need at least two groups. So dapat meron kang dalawang identified na grupo. So yun yung maging experimental group at yung control group. So pag tinawag natin experimental group, sila yung uh, tinatawag rin natin treatment group, sila yung bibigyan natin ng intervention. Pangalawa, individuals must be randomly assigned. So, ibig sabihin, isa-isa uh, natin i-assign yung mga respondents natin. Yung pag-select natin respondents, i-assign natin randomly kung saan sila, kung sa experimental ba o sa control group. Pangatlo, measure the dependent variables through uh, pretest once na uh, na-identify na natin kung sino yung uh, respondents natin sa experimental group at yung respondents natin sa control group, bibigyan natin sila ngayon ng pretest to measure the dependent variables. Kung ano man yung intervention na ibibigay natin. Pang-apat, the intervention is introduced. So, sino dun sa dalawang grupo ang bibigyan lang ng intervention? Yung experimental group. At pang lima, okay, para ma-assess yung uh, epekto or ma-evaluate ma no, yung result ng intervention, it measures the dependent variables through post-test. So, bibigyan ulit yung dalawang grupo after ma-introduce yung intervention or after ng intervention, bibigyan sila ng post-test. So, how are we going to conduct the experiment? First, through experiments in the lab. So, it is further stated that through experiments with human beings are common in laboratory experiment, which often produce results that beg to be tested in the natural world by anthropologists. Another, so through experiments in the field, when experiments are conducted outside the laboratory, it is called field experiments. Quasi-experiments. 
So true this design contains many of the elements of true experiments, participants are not assigned randomly but based on the criteria set by the researcher. And the one-shot case study or the one-group only design, so a single group of individuals is measured on some dependent variable after an intervention has taken place. So where the researcher tries to evaluate the experiment by interviewing the participants and trying to assess the impact of intervention. The two-group post-test only design, the researcher measures a series of variables in both groups where he tries to see whether the intervention is responsible for the differences. The one-group pre-test, post-test design, so ito yung isang common din na madalas gamitin no, sa experiment. Variables are measured, may be observed. Then, intervention takes place, then the variables are measured again. And the next discipline is communication. So, there are communication phenomenon that needs to understand in which researchers are interested about that might be generalized to a larger population. So, dito madalas ang pinag-aaralan ay communicative behaviors na ginagamit natin or response or associated sa isang scenario or real life situation. So, dito natin nagagamit ang research pagdating sa communication. So, iting research areas na madalas uh, topics, no? activism, communication, and social justice, communication, neuroscience, critical journalism studies, culture and communication, digital media and social networks, global and comparative communication, health communication, and media and communication effects. Another discipline is med in medical education. So the role of quantitative research in medical education tends to be predominantly observational research based on surveys and correlational studies. Experimental research design may be enhance the quality of medical education. The selection of a research design for any study should be within the parameters of the research questions as stated in the problem statement or hypothesis. In quantitative research, the findings will be reflect the reliability and validity of the measured outcomes or dependent variables such as changes in knowledge, skills, or attitudes used to assess the effectiveness of medical education, intervention, or the independent variable of interest. So, medical education research may include evaluation of the transfer or acquisition of knowledge, attitudes, or skills in any topic relevant to human health. So, among any type of learner, including health professionals, students in the health professions, and patients. So, next is the behavioral science. So, contemporary researchers are interested in two types of questions, namely questions of relationship and questions of differences. Relationship questions tend to explore how one behavior exhibited by people is related to other types of behavior. Are certain supervisor communication skills related to the emotional experiences of employees? So that is one of the example. And for questions of differences, explore how patterns of behavior or perception might differ from one group or type of person to another. So, for example, do people with disabilities experience emotional labor differently from those without disabilities? Do women perceive talkatives or lack of it differently from men? Do communication styles differ from one culture to the next? From Allen no, of 2009. So, good topic is punishment and rewards in behavioral science. So, dito... Uh, ano ba yung mas effective? Kasi pag pinakinggan natin yung punishment, parang negative. At yung rewards, 
nasa positive side naman siya. So, lahat naman yung dalawa na yan, it motivates behavior, punishment, uh, punishment and rewards. So, titingnan natin. So, magandang topic din to at pag-aralan ang tungkol sa punishment and rewards. So, another discipline is in education. So, in deductive type of research, senior high school student develop critical thinking, capability, and effective analytical research and communication skills that are globally sought after and incredibly beneficial. So, research enhance both reading and writing. So, this kind of research develop the critical thinking capability of students. So, aside from communication skills, na-enhance din dito ang reading and writing literacy that will help them in doing computation and comprehension. These two literacy, reading and writing, function help enable computation and comprehension. Without these skills, it is less likely for anyone to appreciate and get involved in their academic endeavors. So, through research undertakings, students are given opportunity to engage themselves into reading a variety of materials like journals, magazines, and references. So, research writing also forced them to practice their skills in writing wherein they use their own perspectives and transform this into more concrete ideas that they clearly understand. So, here are some research areas in education, learning strategies. So, yung mga teacher natin, hindi lang in sa kanila yung isang learning strategy. So, gumagawa sila, naghahanap sila ng fit dun sa hawak nilang estudyante kasi may iba't ibang level po yung learners na hinahandle nila. So, tinitingnan nila kung anong learning style or learning strategy yung pwede na i-apply niya dun sa mga students niya. Academic performance of the students. So, paano ma-improve no, yung performance ng ating mga estudyante, especially ngayon no, in distance learning. Paano natin matutulungan o maibigay sa mga estudyante yung mataas na antas pa rin ng edukasyon. So, nandun pa rin dapat yung quality of education. Mastery. Mastery, ito yung kadalasan problema. Problema, especially sa math. Yung basic skills, ang bilis makalimutan. Curriculum development, curriculum development, kaya tayo ngayon merong K-12, di ba? Because of research, assessment. So, yan ay isa sa mga uh, hinahanapan ng solusyon ng Department of Education, especially dun sa lumabas na result ng Program for International Student Assessment na napakababa ng rank ng Pilipinas pagdating sa uh, reading, math, and science. So, ginagawa ng paraan niya ng Department of Education para mapataas yung antas ng edukasyon natin dito sa Pilipinas. Next discipline is psychology. So, Martins, as cited by Preto, so the dominant paradigms that guided early educational and psychological research were positivism and its successor, post-positivism. The underlying assumption of positivism include the belief that the social world can be studied in the same way as the natural world, that there is a method for studying that social world that is value-free and the explanation of a causal nature can be provided. So, here are some research areas in psychology. So, problem encountered by individuals, groups, and families. Memory and thinking, conscious processes, perception, problem solving, and creativity. Intellectual development, emerging personality, and acquisition. Social sciences. Quantitative approaches are typically associated with positivity perspective in social research. The method employed in this type of quantitative social research are mostly typically the survey and the experiment. The sample survey is the most commonly used technique for gathering information, whether by quantitative or qualitative means. Surveys are based on using statistical sampling methods by asking a representative sample from a given population and applying a standardized research instrument in the form of structured questionnaires. 
Surveys enable descriptive and explanatory generalization to be made about the population in questions. So, experiments are most commonly used in psychological research and in the broad field of business studies in the form of action research. So, experimental research is based on the researcher manipulating certain condition in order to identify the relationship between particular variables in the hope that it will explain cause and effect relationship. It's seeking to measure the impact that one factor has on another by controlling all other factors that might be effect experimental research builds in the principles of positivities approach to science more than in any research technique research plays an important role in business so here are some research areas in business to produce consumer goods or mass market items product innovation and advancement and the improving services, secure advantage, advantages perspective over compet, competitors. So, in business, na, so dapat laging unique, unique yung ima market natin. So, gumagawa tayo ng mga market, marketing strategy. So, nag-iisip tayo kung paano tayo uh, papantay dun sa mga competitors natin. Improve and increase strength among competitors. Business strategy. A lot of successful business companies such as those that produce consumer goods or mass market items invest in research and development. Companies and industries have high expenditures on research and development, specifically in science and technology and engineering because of its processes like agriculture, food and beverage, manufacturing, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, computer software and hardware, conductor and semiconductor, information and communication technology, construction, robotics, aerospace, aviation, and energy. And also, it is critical to product innovation and advancement and to improving services. Research and developments also help secure advantages perspective over competitors. So, look into the similarities and differences of their products and services will lead them on improve and increase strength among competitors can boost the company market value. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your Walmart channel.